Hi everyone, I am Samu Vandai Sharma from Triveni University, Nepal, and I am very happy to present my work here in NPA Conference 2021. And my topic is a comparative study of structural, mechanical, electronic, and optical properties of pristine and fluid knitted hexagonal boronitride monolayer. So these are the contents of my presentation. Let's begin with introduction and at first background of this particular material, hexagonal boronitride SVN. The SVN is a non-magnetic insulator. It is experimentally synthesized by several techniques. It shows excellent thermal and mechanical strength. However, the electronic band gap of the SVN is too large. In fact, it is a natural insulator and it lacks the semiconducting functionalities. So most of the boronitide materials are used as insulating materials. Meanwhile, the experimental and theoretical work shows that a chemical passivation is one of the best approach to tune the uh, structure, electronic and optical properties and fix the uh, large band issue of monolayer like HBN. So keeping that in mind, we introduce the fluorine passivation or fluorination in HBN structure. It is because several literature shows that fluorination induces half metallicity in nano ribbon. It changes the electronic behavior from insulated to semiconductor and it even induced magnetism. And interesting thing is very recently an experimental study shows that the fluorination in HBN structure can enhance the optical properties. Motivated by all this fact, we calculated structural, electronic, mechanical, and optical properties of this fluorinated structure, as well as the pristine structure of HVN and compare. So now the theory part. Uh, for mechanical properties, we simply uh, use the stress strain relations and use certain mathematics to fit the equations and further we calculated the mechanical parameter like uh, Young's modulus, uh, bulk modulus, or layer modulus, position ratio, and so on. Uh, for optical properties, we use TDP in RP approximation in our calculations. And it is very simple. Now here we calculate the, the epsilon or the dielectric function in terms of uh, epsilon real and epsilon uh, imaginary. And further, we calculate the loss function, the absorption coefficient, refractive index. Uh, and the ref uh, reflectivity and so on. Now here's the computational detail. We use the code CISTA and we use DJPB appro approximation and we use following computational parameters. So now let's start into the result and discussion part. First, the structural property. We can see the optimized structure of both pristine and fluidity structure on the right. Uh, the important thing to mention here is the planar structure is turned into the buckled structure after fluorination with the buckling height around 0 0.50 and strong. And we can see there the bone length is increased significantly between boron and nitrogen. And the negative cohesive and formation energy value confirm the monolayer is stable, as well as uh, the fluorination is experimentally feasible. So now the chemical bone analysis. We perform the Mulligan charge density analysis and plot the valence charge density contour plot to analyze the nature of bones in both phonomere. In pristine SBN, we see boron and nitrogen is covalent, and still we see same thing in passivated structure of SBN. The boron, nitrate, boron and nitrogen is still covalent, but the fluorine nitrogen is ionic, fluorine boron is partly ionic and covalent, as you can see clearly in figure and right. And further, we test the dynamic stability. And we found that there is no imaginary uh, bands, phonon bands in both uh, pristine and fluorinated structure, uh, FB and F. And we confirm that both structures are dynamically stable. And here is the mechanical stability and strength. We calculated the elastic constant using uh, the strain, uh, strain and strain energy relations. We see there the strain along x axis is epsilon x, strain along y axis is epsilon y. And the uh, strain energy distribution clearly in there in uh, for HBN and FBNF clearly on the picture. And further, we found uh, the elastic constant like C11 and C12 and C13. And uh, we checked the bone stability criteria and we found that both monolayers are mechanically stable. And further, we calculated Young's modulus and uh, bulk modulus position ratio for both uh, parameters, uh, both monolayers, and we tabulated there in table. And we can clearly see that the mechanical parameters is reduced. 
especially the Young's molars, cohesion ratio both is reduced after fluorination. And here is the orientation dependent mechanical properties. We fit the polar plot there for inclusion stiffness and position ratio. And we can see the perfect circle for both monolayers, confirming the fact that these both monolayers are uh, mechanically isotropic. And we can see the other parameters like C1, C12, shear and layer modulus and so on for both uh, monolayer. And we see the mechanical parameter is uh, slightly reduced after fluorination. And we can see that detail in uh, the summary of the mechanical pro um, calculation there in table. And we see there the reference, which is experimental data. We are very close to the experimental data that confirms our uh, methodology is accurate. And we see all the parameter for FDNF is uh, reduced, especially for mechanical parameters. And uh, here's now the electronic properties. We can see the band and PDOS uh, side by side here for both monolayer. We can see the uh, electronic behavior of, uh, of HBN, which is insulator, is shifted into the semiconductor by reducing the band from 4.62 to 3.39, as uh, is as uh, shown by previous report. And we can see there in PDOS on the right, the 5p orbital of F at, uh, element is playing main role to reduce the band gap for uh, fluorinated structure. And now on the optical properties, we see the dielectric function at first. We can see there the epsilon real and epsilon imaginary. The value of uh, uh, epsilon real at zero energy gives us static dielectric constant. And we can see there is a significant increment in uh, the static dielectric constant for the fluorinated structure, especially for uh, different incidence. The A and B denotes the incidence of optical uh, signal uh, parallelly and perpendicular respectively. And we see the epsilon imaginary, uh, the more bands, uh, more uh, curves are pronounced for epsilon imaginary, indicating the fact that there is more interband transition in this fluorinated structure and uh, more opti optical activity is increased. And now the energy loss and absorption uh, part here, we can see there the energy loss function for both structure is uh, increased uh, um, significantly in both structure, uh, I mean both incidents. And uh, it also concludes the optical activities increased. And this kind of materials are very useful for optical fiber and beam splitters. And now we can see the final optical parameter that are reflectivity and the refractive index. We can see that the reflectivity is significantly more and pronounced, especially for uh, fluorinated structure in both incidence of uh, both kind of mode of incidence of light. And uh, we can see the refractive index also increase. And uh, this all confirms that the optical activity is uh, significantly increased after fluorination. And all the result of this uh, optical calculation is shown there in table. We can see there eta zero that gives us the, um, the refractive index, static refractive index, epsilon zero, which gives us the uh, static dielectric constant, AE, which gives the uh, absorption edge, that is the value of the photon energy to create the minimum uh, threshold value of photon energy to create the minimum optical activity. And uh, we see the values uh, that we calculated are very much closer to the available literatures. And we can see that for fluorinated structure, all the parameters increase, especially for perpendicular incidence, the more is the increment in optical response. And now the conclusion part, and we conclude that uh, we can conclude that both stocks are thermodynamically and dynamically stable. And after fluorination, the planar structure of the burnite is drawn into the buckled structure. And the electronic behavior also changed from insulated to um, la large band semiconductor after fluorination. And uh, fluorination has improved the optical activity and optical behavior significantly. And this is uh, confirmed by experimental research also. And all this finding confirms that this particular fluorinated boronitide monolayer can be one of the best candidate for nanomechanical optoelectronic device application. For example, like high temperature processor, solid state lightning, solar cells, and power electronics. And further in future, we can calculate uh, other chemical and thermal stability, as well as we can calculate the electronic transfer properties for this particular material. And here's the acknowledged part. We want to acknowledge the um, Kathmandu University for providing this uh, high performance facility. And uh, I, I want to acknowledge all the professors, my friends and family. And here's the reference.
and thank you thank you very much and uh, I, I will be very happy to receive any questions thank you